Sounds good. Can you all see the screen all right? Looks good. All right. Already done the introduction. This is us uh, and a little bit of walkthrough of what we're going to do today. The first thing, we're going to start a little bit of an overview of the project. Um, the project is very new, like almost like three years old now. Um, we're going to do a demo. And for this demo, we're going to use our latest version, uh, which is V1 Alpha 3 API types. And we're going to use the Azure infrastructure provider. And then at the end, we're kind of going to go through like a few points on how you can get involved and like be a part of like this kind of welcoming community. OK, so I'll start like on the why. It's like the reason why we started this project. Like um, there is like, a, like an ongoing effort for like cluster lifecycle. And this is a word that like, gets repeated often. And this project is part of say cluster lifecycle. We try to manage the Kubernetes uh, lifecycle of like your clusters and try to make it like as boring as possible. Uh, Sea cluster lifecycle started like first with kubeadm, and the cluster API builds on top of it. Um, but what we found out like over the years is like the ecosystem is very fragmented. Like in any company that like I've been, like we kind of like built our own things like on top of like cluster API, kubeadm, and things like that. And other companies have been doing the same. Also, there is like a lot of other projects that like have they're, they're they're trying to do this. Uh, GKE started it all. Uh, they did like an amazing job. Then there's the EKS and AKS now. And this project is like trying to do um, their best to kind of like um, make it a standard across like um, all Kubernetes clusters, how you deploy them and how you manage across clouds. And that's the really interesting part, which like we will go in, in later, like with the demo. Like, how do we, we, we make this possible to manage infrastructure across clouds? We'll focus a little bit more on Azure today, um, but the same steps can be taken to deploy on AWS, uh, deploy on vSphere. Um, we also have a development provider, which is based on Docker, which uses Kind under the hood, and you can spin up your local clusters using the cluster API as well. Um, the project has like kind of evolved uh, from the very beginning, like for V1 Alpha 1, it was kind of like a POC. We, we made it so that like people could start testing and we could learn a lot from like, and we, we did learn a lot. And uh, the second iteration was focused on extensibility. So things like how can you bring different infrastructure providers in without modifying the core of the code? Um, so right now we're using Kubernetes object references and, uh, and CRD extensively. And then uh, in V1 Alpha 3, we made like higher order functionality happen. So now we're, we're actually reusing our own objects to create control planes. And we make control plane upgrades, control plane initialization as easy as possible. So now you can create an HA control plane, but just setting one replicas number and that's it that's all you have to do and that was that was one of our goals um, and now we also are building on top of our um, types by kind of like automating things out of the box and providing a, a user experience that, that that's actually consistent um, as Cecile will show soon like we actually worked on cluster cuddle which is our utility and it's also a library so you can embed it in your own um, internal tools and you can reuse it and it exposes the interfaces, uh, objects so that you can build automation on top of it. And the last one is that, yeah, we wanna be consistent across like cloud manage. So if we find things that are common across clouds, we'll bring it into our own types or we will like bring some experiments to kind of like uh, add more to the features of cluster API. Moving on to the uh, the next slide. Oh, I went too fast. Um, so what is it? Like, this is like a very simple image. So a user, you have a declarative spec, so you have like a bunch of YAML. And we, we know that we, we love YAML in Kubernetes world, right? So you have a lot of YAML, and this uh, declarative spec like has uh, cluster API types, infrastructure types, then you have a management cluster. The trick of cluster API is that we use Kubernetes to manage other Kubernetes clusters. 
So you need a, at least one cluster that you spin up and you can use um, production uh, clusters like EKS, AKS, GKE. Um, in our quick start, for example, like if you wanna like use your local kind cluster, you can. And uh, then you can move from your kind cluster to another cluster. We have also support for that. And the role of the management cluster is to manage the lifecycle of, of other clusters running in, in any uh, uh, provider. And you can add providers as, as, as we grow and, we, and it's a, the framework is pretty much extensible. Um, so in this picture, you can see like AWS, VMware, vSphere, Google Cloud and Azure. Uh, the management cluster lets you create new instances, add new nodes or um, create a control plane and manage it and also now manage upgrades as well. Um, slides are really slow to update. Okay, so where do we want to be? I, I touched on the subject that like we want to make the managing the cluster, cluster lifecycle Kubernetes clusters boring. So it should be a given that like if you have a CLI that can create like uh, clusters for you that you can manage day zero operation, day one and day two, um, which in, involves like upgrades as well, which has been like a, a really intense subject for a long time. We wanted to make sure that the project's battery is included. In fact, uh, Cluster API today ships both um, with a bootstrapping mechanism based on KubeADM and um, a bootstrapping mechanism for cloud providers um, um, based on like any cloud provider that you want to add in. And then we recently added control planes and we ship with KubeADM as well. So our, our control plane by default will be we have stacked at CD uh, and use kubeadm uh, in it and kubeadm join to create a control plane. And uh, we also do kubeadm upgrades as well in there. Um, and as we make progress, we wanna make sure that like security requirements, your business use cases, different topologies, like how you wanna create clusters and really complex scenarios are maybe not built in, but available. So that like you can extend our code base, you can extend our contracts to make sure that like Cluster API works for you. Okay, and I think now I can hand it over to Cecile for the demo and we'll show you what we built. Well, thank I've you. Just spotlight. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so let me share. My screen. Okay. All right. So um, what I'm going to show you is basically how to bootstrap a cluster API, uh, cluster cap Z, so the cluster API Azure provider. But a lot of the steps here are actually uh, common with other providers. So what I show you works for Azure, but you can easily apply the same steps and get a cluster with AWS or another uh, cluster API provider. So here I have um, an AKS cluster ready, and I'm going to use an AKS cluster today, but you could use a kind cluster, you could use any kind of Kubernetes cluster you want, really. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use cluster kettle that Vince uh, talked about. So I already have it installed here on my machine. Um, and what cluster kettle is going to allow me to do is it's going to let me init um, my cluster, which means I'm going to turn my uh, AKS cluster into a cluster API management cluster. Um, so I tell it I want it to use infrastructure Azure. So that's because I'm gonna use CAPZ. And so here it's gonna go and fetch the different providers and install them on the cluster. Right. So um, right now it's using uh, version uh, 0.3.3, which is the latest cluster API version. Um, based on V1 alpha three. Yes, so it's installing uh, the cluster API provider, which is uh, the base provider for cluster API. And then uh, the bootstrap QADM provider. So that's uh, for QADM bootstrapping. And then Azure, finally, our control plane. Okay. 
And so once uh, that's done, um, my cluster is going to be able to, so okay, so now my management cluster has been initialized. And so if I do uh, get pods, I'll see that I have oops, uh, all the uh, cluster API controllers uh, running here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a cluster. Uh, I'm going to call it my CabZ cluster. And, and use cluster cuddle config, and that's going to generate a config for my cluster in YAML. And so I'm going to tell it I want Kubernetes version 1.17.3, and I want three control planes and one worker machine. All right. And now all I have to do is apply that config on my management cluster. And that's going to create all the objects I need for a working CAVSI cluster. Um, so here, let's talk a bit more about those. Um, so you'll see that if I do get clusters, it will show me that my CAVZ cluster has started provisioning. Um, so that's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but um, here we can look at the different types in the meantime. So we have cluster, which is a uh, cluster API types that's shared amongst the provider. And that's uh, really uh, defining the um, cluster level things like uh, networking and API endpoints and things that aren't um, specific to machines. And then you have uh, Azure cluster. So here, let's. Uh, and so that one is more specific to uh, my uh, infrastructure provider. So the things uh, that you have in the Azure cluster might be completely different from what you have, let's say, in an AWS cluster. Those are infrastructure specific, and that's where you specify things like your Azure location, uh, your network spec. So that's where you'd say if you want to use an existing uh, virtual network or uh, what kind of what subnets you want to use, things like that. Um, and then, right. So now my cluster is provisioned. So that means all my networking. Um, resources has been have been created. And if I do get machines, so that's where the uh, machines start getting created. And so here um, I have a first control plane that's getting provisioned and the machine. And uh, if I do Azure machines, right, same thing. So uh, machine is, it's the same thing as cluster in Azure cluster. Uh, machine is the general type that is uh, shared amongst provider, whereas Azure machine is specific to Azure, and that's where you see things like uh, the VM size and the VM resource group and things like that. Uh, okay. So. I'm just going to check that everything is happening as it's supposed to. OK. Things that are created. OK. And then the other thing that we can watch is um, the QAM control plane. And so this is uh, where I can manage my control planes. Uh, so I'll show you a bit later. I'm going to do an upgrade, and that's where I'll do it from. So right now, I have two that have come up. I'm um, waiting for the third one. And uh, they're unavailable at the moment. That's normal. That's because I haven't installed uh, CNI yet. OK, good. So things are starting to happen. Um, let me just decrease the size of it. Uh, so we have. Okay, uh, so we have one control plane that's come up, and the second one as well, and then our machine is there. Okay, still waiting for the third control plane. Yeah, and just to like a little explain like what's going on under the hood. It's like when KCP starts, like we create the first machine. Um, and then we also run health, health checks, um, for example, like on the machine itself, uh, we make sure that like 
uh, Cubidium in it has uh, succeeded. Um, but then we also have run the health checks on etcd to make sure that etcd is actually like up and running and everything is okay for um, to, to join other machines as well. Um, and then when now we are creating the second machine, we're waiting for the, the Cubidium join to finish um, and then also doing the same health checks. So the, f the first control plane, um, like to get to three machines will take a little bit. Uh, usually it's like around like five, 10 minutes, but there is like a lot of things that we can improve to make this go faster. Right. Um, and so it looks like we have two control planes here and the third one is taking a bit longer to provision. So I'm actually going to do a little bit of demo magic here, I think, because we don't want to wait too long for the third one. So I'm just going to run a little backup script. Um, and I actually have a cluster that has three provision control planes that we can use. Um, so this is just going to pull my credentials from my other APS management clusters. And then if I do get cluster here, I have ta-da, my other CABZ cluster. OK, great. So we can just use that one for now um, while the other finishes. OK, so this one has, uh, so what we'd expect, so three control planes and one uh, worker machine. And so if I do get machine deployment, um, and machine deployment is really like, uh, you know how you have deployments for pods, machine deployment is sort of like deployment for machines. Um, and that's really where you can uh, scale up and uh, you see how many replicas you have. And so here I want to do kubectl scale. Um, and I'm going to do replicas. I'm going to scale it to three. Um, and then this is the name of my oops machine. Great. And then now it's going to scale up to three. If I do get machines, I have two more machines that are provisioning, right? Um, and that's really one of the really cool things about cluster API is that you can go and manage things like that directly from uh, where you manage uh, the rest of your Kubernetes applications and directly from the Kubernetes APIs. And the other thing that I wanted to show you is, um, so now, okay, uh, we have, we're going to get the, uh, cube config. So first I have to export the name of my new cluster. Oops. What did I do? I'm missing it. Uh, your, your last, you, you should replace the last quote. Oh, uh, oops, yeah. thanks. Yes. Great, great, thank you. Okay, um, and then uh, I'm going to get the kubeconfig. So it's stored as a secret in my management cluster. And so now I can do uh, get nodes. And before I do that, I'm just going to uh, apply Calico as a CNI. It was already there, great. Okay, so now if I do get nodes, uh, I have, so perfect. So I have the three control planes that have been there for a while and then I have my two new machines that are coming up. They're not ready yet. They've been there for 20 seconds. They should be ready in just a little bit. Oh, there we go, perfect. Um, and so now um, if I do get uh, KCP, so that's the control plane, so I have three. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say I have uh, three control planes and they're running 173 and I want to change them to, I want to upgrade them to run Kubernetes version 174 that came out recently. And so here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do patch. Um, I could also do kubectl edit and go manually and change it, but I'm just going to change the version in the spec. So right now it's 1173. I'm going to make it 1174. And oops, that's the wrong clip. Uh, there we go. Okay, and so what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and uh, it's going to provision a new control plane with uh, 1174 and then it's going to do a rolling update and um, 
delete. So provision a new one and then delete the old one until all of them are replaced. Um, and then we'll eventually end up with uh, all control planes running one sentence floor. Uh, I can also do the same thing with my machines. Um, so if I do uh, get mission deployments, so now I have three replicas, they're all running. And I can do edit and Oops. the version. So I'm making it one sentence for as well, and then save. And now it's edited, and it's going to do the same thing. So now there's four replicas. Um, the new one is coming up. And yeah, um, so it's going to take a little while for all the VMs to get replaced. So I don't, maybe we can start with a Q&A in the meantime, because um, it might take five or 10 minutes. But that's pretty much the demo. Cool. Thank you. Um, so I have one quick question. I have, I have a lot of questions. Um, and I'm sure I think Kazan has some too. Um, so do you, as part of the, the build process for cluster API uh, and machine controllers, are, are you performing, is, are there any type of pre-flight checks that are going on with, to ensure that you have enough resources before you create instances like workers or masters or things like that? I'm sorry, are you talking about quota, like uh, yeah. Azure Cloud uh, checks? Great, yeah, uh, good question. Uh, not at the moment. Uh, right now, we're just uh, trying to provision, and uh, it uh, it doesn't check before trying to provision. Um, but that's something definitely that we want to add. Yes, um, so you can know ahead of time if you're not able to create machines. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. One awesome. cool thing, though. Right now, sorry. One cool thing is that you can check the uh, status, like all the. Um, uh, logs that you get from uh, Azure or any provider, you can get from the pod logs. So it's really easy to check that you're getting a quota error. You can do kubectl logs and then check the controller logs and that will tell you the message that it's getting back from the Azure APIs. Very nice. That demo covered a lot. I feel like with a lot of demos, I have to watch it again before some of it sinks in. I can't wait to watch the recording of this again later. <laughs> I keep hearing cluster API all the time. Everybody's so excited about it. So glad that you were able to show it today. Uh, so I do Thank have you. a question for you all. Did you want to, did the thing that you were doing on the demo finish? Did you want to show that? Sure. Um, actually, yeah, I think some of the missions are running now. Um, hold on. So, oops, okay. Um, so yeah, uh, the new machines came up. I think it's still provisioning some of them, but uh, yeah, so we have the new control plane here that's uh, 174 and the, uh, this one is getting deleted. Uh, and then I think the new machine is still coming up. Uh, it's provisioning, but we have an Azure ID here. So the provider ID here is the uh, ID of the resource in Azure. I think the, the share might have gone away. Oh, did I not share? Sorry, oops, forgot to click share. Okay, let me start again. So uh, we have, oh great, so now they're all running. Um, so we have the new control plane running and um, if you do get nodes, you'll see that this new one here came up and uh, it's been here for two minutes. It's running 117.4 and this one at the top is getting this, uh, deleted right now. And then uh, we have a new uh, machine that just came up uh, with 117.4. So uh, if I do get machines, that's showing me the status. So um, this one is the control plane that's getting deleted. Looks like my new machine just went to running. Um, and the resource ID here that I was talking about, that's uh, the provider ID. That's the uh, Azure resource ID. So that's my uh, where I would find it. Very nice. Yes. Claps again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, the demo we'll gods back. were relatively kind. <laughs> <Ish>. <laughs> you got through it. You showed some awesome stuff. 
Uh, so I wanted to ask a question for both you and Vince. You probably both have something to share here. No matter how many KubeCons I go to, everybody always wants to know, what's it like being a contributor and how do I get started? So have at it. <laughs> Vince, do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, I would say like getting from zero to contributor, it's a really hard experience. It was for me, like in the beginning, the community can be sometime like, uh, you can be afraid of it, right? It's like, it's pretty normal. Um, but once you get into it, it's just like super easy to roll. Um, and I know this is kind of sounds simplistic, but like, I feel like a lot of contributors that I've met have had the same experience. Um, one thing that we are trying to do as part of Cluster of is just like reaching out like actively to people that want to contribute, like regardless of like if they're like technical or non-technical, like any skills you have, like we could probably use it. Like, for example, um, we have like some people that just like could contribute docs, but not code. And that's okay. Like we have a lot of things um, to, to do there as well. Um, but um we try to groom the backlog too and some projects are like really good at it and some projects like uh, like have like less uh, people that like can do the grooming um um like a lot and so we're trying to get better at it um did i answer your question like or were you looking for some something else no that's great i don't think that i've really heard that perspective before but it reminds me of my own experience trying to contribute to kubernetes the the incline at the beginning is kind of steep, but then once you start getting involved, it seems like it kind of smooths yeah. out. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, and I think we also have a slide of uh, ways that people can get involved for cluster API specifically. Um, that would be great. Share. Um, and yeah, it's definitely intimidating at first, but uh, I yeah would recommend. Uh, we love new contributors. Which is also relevant to a comment that was posted in the chat, which is uh, Stephen Augustus posted. I think that one of the biggest blockers, as Vince is mentioning, is that people don't know where to get started or if they have the aptitude to get started. Uh, but really, the barrier is pretty low to become an org member if you're interested. Are you labeling uh, issues in GitHub that are for beginners or people who can join and try to start contributing? What's the label that you're using? Yeah, we usually uh, label both like help wanted or good first issue. Um, and we actually do this at every uh, community meeting. Uh, so every Wednesday we meet at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and at the end of the of the meeting, we actually go through the backlog and see which issues are have no milestone and we assign one with some priority and help wanted or good first issue. And I have to say, like, whenever I put good first issue or help one on some, like, if there is someone out there, they will pick them up. So it's really great to see the community come uh, in action that, that way. I love calling into the community calls. I always try to hit the, the larger community, Kubernetes community call on Thursday mornings. Anyone out there is interested in getting involved with these communities, definitely call into the community calls and just listen and see what these orgs are like. I've also seen some great comments recently about how uh, open source communities like these SIGs do a great job of managing remote work. They have people contributing all over the world and they have all of these tools and techniques that they use to make that happen. So all of us stuck at home right now could really learn something from the way that SIGs run things. That's a good point, Kaslin. I, I kind of look at the Kubernetes project and the SIGs as a great structure for 21st century modern software development for permanently working from home eventually. Um, so, which I think is cool. So we, uh, we do have a question as well, uh, another question that came in from the audience, which is, can cluster API be used to spawn new machines from AMIs as well? Uh, yeah. I've I think Vince probably has more uh, knowledge on that specific. That's uh, the Amazon uh, machines, right? Or Amazon images, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, they can. Yes, uh, for sure. So we actually have, um, we use Image Builder, which is a, another Kubernetes 6 project. Um, and um, that uh, allows us to build VM images, not just for Amazon, but also for Azure and vSphere. And um, each provider has their own image builder pipelines. 
um, and we do uh, have default images that people can use. Um, so they can either use those or we recommend for production purposes using your own image. So building your own image and packing um, your uh, own uh, needed components in there. Um, but yes, for sure, we definitely use AMIs and Azure VM images as the base images for VMs. Are you recommending using uh, tooling like Packer then to pack the images? Yes. So the yeah exactly. So Image Builder uh, uh, Image Builder uses Packer under, uh, underneath to build the images, and so it's really easy to reuse the scripts that are already there and just customize them to build your own images. You don't have to build the whole thing from scratch yourself. And this is a project under Kubernetes six, so you can just find uh, Kubernetes six slash Image Builder. Uh, there's some docs as well in there and yeah, like that's the foundation on like how we get our images and set up with cluster API. Yeah. Kaslin, do you have any other questions? I kind of want to read what uh, Stephen Augustus added in the chat in case anyone missed it. Uh, he also added that the community is welcoming of non code and code contributors both and they do group mentoring sections. So if you are worried about whether or not you're ready to contribute, maybe a mentor would be able to help you. Uh, and check out good first issue and help wanted labels if you're interested in helping to contribute, which is true not just for Cluster API, it's for the whole Kubernetes org. There are also actually a couple of Twitter accounts that follow good first issues and post them like a couple times a day or something. Uh, they're not super active or anything, but I do follow them. <laughs> cool. Well, so I think uh, I think now we're rolling into uh, San Francisco here soon. I think, right, Kaslin? Yep. So thank you so much, Cecile and Vince. Fantastic. Thank I'm you. so glad that we got to thank learn you. about Cluster API today. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's an awesome project. I've been following it for a few years, so. Thank you. I would definitely recommend trying the quick start. Uh, great way to re go over the demo step by step at your own pace, because I know a lot of things were going on in there. <laughs>